So I made a break in the last video because we're getting into cooking methods here that utilize oil and the other cooking methods have utilized more air. And that's uh, kind of a good division here in the dry cooking methods. Uh, there are more dry cooking methods and more to talk about with dry cooking methods than there are in moist. So your videos for this section are a little bit longer and more detailed. So sauteing, and I'm going to, I'm going to roll these videos out by less oil to more oil. So when we're talking about sauteing, we are talking about very high heat and very little fat or oil. So you're just barely coating the bottom of the pan. Sauteing means jump, and you're going to move food around in the pan very rapidly. If you've ever seen a video or photos of a chef and they're flipping food in a pan and they're throwing a little fire, uh, you, can't, you shouldn't be doing that with an electric stove. But with a gas stove, that's just normal because little bits of oil are flying into the air and catching the flames. Your pan is not on fire. Uh, you're not doing a flambe on purpose or on accident, but you're just throwing out little flames, which is pretty and fun. And it's, uh, it's, a, it's a good thing to kind of see. It's very, very flashy. So this is going to keep uh, water and vitamins. It's going to develop a lot of flavor and it's going to keep a lot of color on those items. This is only for tender meats, um, fish, seafood, like shrimp, um, and good for vegetables. So to get your saute, I have a couple of, of very short videos in the PowerPoint, uh, which are very beneficial. One of them is how to properly heat a pan. You absolutely have to have a, a pan that is hot enough to rid itself of the moisture from the vegetables or from the food items to maintain a saute. If you put cold food into a cold pan and when you preheat a pan you do it with nothing in it like you, the pan itself needs to be hot before the oil gets hot or the oil will get hot before the pan is hot if you don't maintain the right amount of heat then when you put that cold food into your pan the moisture from that food is not going to cook off and you're going to be cooking the food in its own moisture and then at that point you have a moist cooking method not a dry cooking method. So to maintain the, the saute, you need to make sure that you are um, keeping preheating that pan properly and then keeping it. And these two videos here, which we will see again with the, May with the Maillard reaction and the caramelization lesson, these are very good short, quick uh, little YouTube clips on maintaining that saute. So you also wanna make sure that your food is appropriately sized that you have the correct pan size uh, and that you are using like a medium to meet uh, or a high to medium heat. You want to, you're not doing this on low. You want a, a pretty good amount of heat depending on what you're doing and how much you're putting in the pan. So you just use a tiny little bit of fat. Um, your pan needs to be preheated. You want a thin layer of food and you want to make sure that the food browns really well on the bottom before you flip. So, so all of that is just really critical. One of the main lessons that I teach my students is food is cold. And if food is cold, when you add it to a hot pan, you, take, you took a whole bunch of heat out of that pan. So you need recovery time. And that's why preheating that pan and not overcrowding the food and not playing with your food is going to be really important to maintaining sauteing and getting that caramelization or Maillard reaction. So in your PowerPoint here, there is a slide that goes over those tips that I just covered uh, verbally. So preheat the pan with no oil, just enough oil when it's hot to cover the bottom of the pan. You want to use a high smoke point oil. Canola oil, peanut oil, grapeseed oil is good. Um, olive oil is not good for sautéing. Butter is not good for sautéing. Vegetable oil is not good for sautéing. You want to make sure that you, canola oil is the most cost effective. Peanut oil is really good. These things get really hot. So other oils like Crisco and butter and olive oil, they don't get, uh, they don't get hot. They start smoking before they reach a, a good temperature for saute. And when your oil just lightly begins to smoke, add your food. Your food should be as dry as possible. 
So if you have washed it, then just pat it dry to get the water off. Um, place food as little a layer of a pan as you can. And specifically, allow the food to brown. And this is most critical with the meat. So flip food as little as possible. Do not play with your meat in the pan. Um, you need to let it brown on the bottom. So when you first put that cold meat into that hot pan, it's going to stick. And it's ready to flip when it has unstuck itself. And, and there's a the video shows that um, in the past videos, if you've watched those. And that's just a, you'll see me do that in my demonstration videos. And that's just a really critical lesson. Uh, and something that beginner cooks, they, they start playing with their stuff um, in the pan way too much. Let it do its thing. Let it brown on the bottom. Okay. So, um, when we're talking about stir frying, <clears throat> essentially stir frying and sauteing are really similar. The, the, they both use high heat. They both use little fat. You both kind of move them around kind of quickly in the pan, um, particularly vegetables. You can start flipping those sooner than you would like meat. Uh, you put a little sauce created in the pan, meats and vegetables, bite size, that word is cut up. Cut, cut off, sorry, by the photo, bite-sized things, um, pieces. Um, you, you use a wok, which is a bowl-shaped pan. You've seen, you may have seen in Asian-style cooking. And um, you want to make sure this is something, your mise en place. So when we talked about mise en place, I kind of brought up the fact that you want to prep your vegetables before food hits the pan. So for stir frying and for sauteing, it's really critical that you have already cut up or measured or prepared what is going to hit the pan. So you absolutely would not put food in the pan and then turn around and be cutting up your carrots and cutting up your peppers because this, this process is so quick that your food items would be way overcooked if you are still prepping and mise en place. So that's why it's really important in the mise en place to remember to, to do what your recipe says. If your recipe says julienne the peppers and the carrots and the onions, and you need to do that before you actually hit food in the pan. So the stir frying for mise en place is really about the same. Um, kind of you, may, you do maintain a constant motion in the stir frying and then for pan frying, pan frying is going to be more of a moderate heat, moderate fat or oil. And I'm going to put a break in my video here.